Do you want to learn how to code, become a full stack developer and ultimately get hired or find other ways to make money through code? This is the video for you. In this video, we are going to cover a full roadmap on full stack development. And how is this video different from the others? This video doesn't only talk about the technical things you need to do, but you also talk about the mindset you should have, the way you should think about approaching being a full stack developer, and ultimately a step-by-step -step roadmap on how you can do to be a full stack developer. So I am ATU, I'm a full stack developer who has built and published several apps on the App Store, built several websites for clients, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do to become a full stack developer in 2024. So before we get into this video, if you don't want to spend a lot of time learning all of these that we are going to see in this video by yourself and you want to join a step-by-step -step full stack development training program where we are going to take you basically from zero to a full stack developer in less than a year, you can currently join my full stack development program which is going to take you from a complete beginner to a full stack developer in less than a year. So in order to become a full stack developer, the first thing you need and the very first thing you need is the will to learn. So I always see a lot of people who claim that they want to be full stack developers or they want to learn how to code, but they don't really have the will. They basically give up when things get hard. And when things get difficult and you give up, it just shows that you have a very weak will, you don't have a strong will, and ultimately that kind of attitude will not get you anywhere. So the first thing and the most fundamental thing is to have the will. The next thing is to take action. So even before you write your first line of code, you should be willing to set aside one or two hours a day, at least every single day towards learning. Because learning doesn't happen magically. You don't just wake up one day and you're just magically a developer who already knows everything. You need to set aside time every single day, be disciplined and follow a schedule so that you shouldn't spend too much time learning and getting frustrated about not making any progress. So after you've decided that you want to learn and you've set aside a few hours a day in order to learn, you need to decide if you want to get a paid course like my course or my training program or you want to learn for free by yourself. Then you can also decide to take no action and ultimately give up on your dreams of becoming a developer. But we are not focusing on this one. We are focusing on the people who want to actually become developers. So let's look at the options you have after you decide to take this step. So if you decide not to get the pay program, you can always learn for free on YouTube. You can read articles, you can read articles on Medium and ultimately just be like a fully self-taught developer. The only caveat with this time is that it's very frustrating. It takes a lot of time. You basically have no mentor. So basically no one to ask questions when you get stuck. And trust me, when you're learning how to code, you always want to have someone to whom you can look up to, to whom you can ask questions and even ultimately just pick their brain to see how they think. So you can ultimately emulate it and try to implement it in your own way of reasoning. But that is still one way to learn if you decide to go with a free path. It's still very genuine and it's still very alright and you can still keep watching this video as the roadmap will still apply to you. Now on the flip side, the way I recommend and the way I like learning new things is by getting a paid program or a paid course where you actually have somebody who is guiding you step by step, telling you everything you need to do, giving you all the materials and resources necessary for you to practice. And in this case, your growth is more predictable and you can actually visualize the end even at the start. So once you've decided which path you want to follow in order to become a full stack developer, you now have to start from the fundamentals. So you have to learn the foundational technologies, which includes HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I call these foundational technologies, but in fact, it's part of what is called front-end development. Being a full-stack developer basically means that you know how to build on the front-end and on the back-end. The front-end is basically what the user sees, so what the user interacts with or the user interface, and the back-end is what the user doesn't see. That is all the logic that is happening in the background or we usually call it the server side. So you first have to start learning the foundational technologies, which includes HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML is basically the backbone of the web. It's like the canvas on which everything else is laid. Then CSS is just like what beautifies the internet or what beautifies web pages. And then finally, JavaScript is what gives it functionality. So when you click on the button, what happens after you click on the button? So basically telling your website to do something after a button is clicked or after an event is triggered. That's what basically JavaScript does. So in front-end development, after you finish learning these foundational technologies, you need to move next to 
front-end frameworks. For front-end frameworks, there are several front-end frameworks and most of them are just JavaScript frameworks. Because as time goes on, JavaScript has evolved a lot and there are a lot of frameworks and libraries that helps us build front-end way faster and way more robust front-end can be built with these frameworks. So very popular frameworks are React.js, Vue.js and AngularJS. But the most popular here is React.js. And in my full stack development training, we mainly focus on React.js. This is because a lot of companies use React.js. It is created and still maintained by Facebook and it has a very large community. So there are just so many good reasons to be a React.js developer. And as time goes on, you are really going to understand why. So the purpose of this video is to give you a guide so that after this video, you know exactly what you should learn. So the main framework I, I recommend here is React.js. So after this, you need to go to a CSS framework. So this is not mandatory. That is why I put it just below the front end framework. But this is very great because a lot of companies use CSS frameworks, most especially Tailwind CSS. So it's a pretty good way of writing CSS. It actually makes things more modular. It doesn't require you to have several separate CSS files and you can write all your Tailwind just inside your JavaScript files. And a lot of people choose it as their framework of reference. So I dearly recommend this after you learn the front-end frameworks or you can even learn both simultaneously. So after this, you need to learn front-end build tools. This include things like Webpack, NPM and Yarn. So when you're dealing with React.js or when you're dealing with several JavaScript frameworks or libraries, you'll be working a lot with NPM and Yarn. So just having a global understanding of how this works and how Webpack works is very useful. You don't need to know how to build libraries by yourself, but just having an understanding of how these libraries work is useful as a front-end developer. So let's call this one below useful knowledge. So after this, you need to learn how to fetch APIs and make HTTP requests. Because as a front-end developer, a lot of things you're doing is basically sending data to a server, and this is done via an API and ultimately via an HTTP request. So knowing how to do this is fundamental as a front-end developer. And early on, even when learning JavaScript, you're going to learn this. If you're in my front-end development training, we are currently learning how to fetch data using JavaScript. And this is something fundamental you need to know how to do as a full-stack developer or as a front-end developer. Then after ultimately learning front-end development, as a full stack developer, you have to go to the next part, that is backend development. So now let's look at what is required for backend development. So the next thing you need in order to become a full stack developer is to learn backend development. And to get started with backend development, you have to learn programming. And when I say programming, I'm talking about programming as a whole. Because programming is basically telling the computer what to do, and you can do this via any programming language. And I've listed some programming languages you can learn here which includes Java, Node.js, Python, among others. And you also have things like PHP, Golang, and there are several other programming languages. So this is the fundamental. The programming language you really start with doesn't really matter that much because a lot of the concepts in programming are shared among all the programming languages. If you're learning loops, variable declaration, data types, all of those are found in all programming languages. So the programming language you start with isn't really a problem. It's really understanding the concepts on how to give the computer instructions, which is really the thing that matters. So as a backend developer, after you learn a programming language and you learn the fundamentals of programming, you have to now go to server-side development, dedicated server-side frameworks for a lot of these programming languages. For example, if you learn Java as your programming language, you can learn the Spring Boot frameworks. And these frameworks basically help you build server-side application faster and more easily, and also help you build REST APIs and RESTful services, all that without needing to write a tremendous amount of logic in your server side. So these frameworks really makes life easier and makes it more straightforward to build server side applications. So if you're learning Java, you can go with Spring Boot. If you're learning Node.js, you can go with Express.js, Python, you go with Django, and PHP, you go with Laravel, and there are several frameworks for all the programming language, or let me say most of the programming languages. So now still in server side development, after you've learned backend frameworks for server-side development. So the next thing you need to learn is basically how to handle a database. So this includes creating data in your database, updating data, deleting data, and ultimately retrieving data from your database. So the next question you should ask yourself when dealing with database is, do I want to use SQL or no SQL? So SQL basically stands for Structured Query Language, which is basically a programming language which is used to manipulate SQL-based databases. So if you decide to go with an SQL database, there are several options for you, which includes MySQL, 
PostgreSQL, MariaDB, among others. And if you decide to go with a NoSQL database, so basically a non-relational database, which mostly store data in documents and doesn't use SQL, you have options like MongoDB, DynamoDB, Redis, even uh, Firebase, Firestore, among several others. So these are the options you have when it comes to database. Generally, we usually pick one and first learn one and get good at one section before moving over to the next or before moving over to the next type of database. The skills you learn in one database is transferable to the other, whether it's a SQL or a no SQL database. So picking one and starting with one is very helpful and it's something that you should always consider. You, should, you shouldn't really spend too much time trying to pick a database when you're learning, try to go with what is commonly used so you can understand the concepts. In my full stack development training, we basically start with MongoDB, but other people can start with SQL and that is still totally fine. So after basically learning a database, the next thing you have to learn as a backend developer is how to expose your own REST APIs. So we saw in frontend development that you need to know how to fetch APIs. In backend development, you need to know how to create your own APIs, expose them and ultimately test them. And finally, to test your APIs, there is a very popular tool called Postman. This Postman tool basically helps you test your API endpoints and see if everything works and returns the data you want it to return. So after learning all this, after learning backend development, you have to learn very useful concepts. This is not very mandatory if you're a full stack developer, but to be a more versatile full stack developer, you need to learn concepts like authentication, security. Uh, continuous integration and continued development. Authentication is basically like when a user wants to log into an app. There is a whole process that goes on in the background that makes sure that a user securely logs into their account and, and has access to only their data. This is usually done through authentication systems which use unique tokens to identify their users and learning how this actually works is very great for, as a full stack developer. But you don't need to know how to build your own authentication system as nowadays there are already several tools that help you already integrate authentication systems in your apps. And then also knowing how to secure your backend, secure your APIs, and overall securing your apps is something you should know as a full stack developer. Continuous integration and continuous development is basically something that is included in what is called DevOps. This just helps you create pipelines in order to deploy your application smoothly and adding updates without breaking the other code or without breaking the code, the current code in production. Production is basically when you've already launched the app and that is the version that your users are using. And finally, these last concepts are the concepts you must know, even though it's not strictly for front-end or back-end development. These are concepts you must know overall as a developer. And this includes version control and very popular version control tools out there nowadays are GitHub or GitLab. Finally, you have to get familiar with cloud services like AWS, Azure and GCP. So this is the full roadmap on becoming a full stack developer in 2024. And I think this roadmap will still be valid in many, many years to come as this is a very broad and general roadmap. And the more you get specific in several tools and several departments, the more you're going to discover other tools. But by the time you've already learned all this, learning new tools is just like a no brainer. Let me not say a no brainer, but it's just a matter of time to you learn a new tool in order to complement the development, maybe in a new project or try to work maybe with a new team. So this is all about this video. If you made it to the end, congratulations. And this is a big step towards starting your journey towards becoming a full stack developer. So if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment and tell me what other kind of video you want me to make. Subscribe and see you in the next one.